The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the July 21st, magnificent Monday edition of uh, the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone is off to a great start for their Monday. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do all that we can do to have an extraordinary day for the next hour, I'll do everything that I can do to help you navigate these markets. We'll take a look at different patterns out here, different tools. The A to B equals CD pattern, Fibonacci expansion and retracement. Of course, the Rose Momentum indicator signals out there. And what I want you to know, if you're just uh, tuning in to us, uh, today was an inaugural day for a new show that we started at 8 a.m. It's called, uh, oh, uh, I lost it, but it's, uh, it's led by our man, uh, John Logan. John Logan, you may know, he's been doing interviews with Tom uh, every uh, week. He's the uh, provider of uh, Global Market Pulse. Thank you, Al. That's the name of the show. And uh, John will give you the Global Market Pulse. He'll be utilizing his proprietary market profile systems. You know that I utilize those as one of the tools as we take a look at where markets are headed to. So each morning at 8 a.m., turn into, uh, tune into uh, TFNN. Go to tfnn.mobi and listen to uh, John's extraordinary uh, show out there. Beautiful thing. Ten hours of live programming each and every day. Now, We've got a uh, call-in talk show. That means you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll uh, take a look at uh, your stock or analyze whatever it is that uh, you've got a question about. And I'd certainly love to hear from you. So uh, don't hesitate. Look, I know the anxiety when you make a call into a radio show. I, I, I'm on the radio. I do this. And I get anxious when I pick up the phone and dial into a uh, call-in talk show. But I'll make it nice and smooth and easy for you out here. Um, and then even, let's go uh, get the uh, day kicked off out here. It is Magnificent Monday. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. We've got the uh, Dow trading off 69 points right now, uh, trading out at 17,031. S&P down six at 1972. NASDAQ off 15 points at 4416. Russell off six points at 1145. NDX 100 down 13 at 39 at 26. Gold is up three bucks right now. That's trading at 1313. And silver only up nine pennies, trading at $20. And 98 cents. Light sweet crude on the move here this morning, up a buck, trading out at 10408. Uh, so, where do we begin the uh, trading session? Well, let's see. Moving to the upside here. Let's take a look at a couple of things. Uh, Netflix uh, moving to the upside in Baidu. Let's go peek in on those two stocks. Net Netflix leading the charge up five bucks. Let's go see what it actually means. It's trading out at 450 and a change out here. Oh, I deleted the chart. That was not a uh, smooth. That was definitely not a smooth move out there. But that's okay. We can get that chart back up on our screen out here. Give me just a moment to uh, do that. Uh, let me change the style template out here. There we go. Now we got Netflix on our screen. All right, let me just stick her back in this section. It'll make it a little bit easier for me. And then instead of hitting the delete key, Steve will hit the expanded key out there. Okay, now that we got the fat fingers out of the way, if we take a look at Netflix. It's running into its market profile high. I mean, it's trading right into it as we speak right now. That's a resistance area at about 452.03. It's trading 450.02. Now, what else is it doing? Well, Netflix has got a swing point out here. It had a little breakout session with volume. And that was on the trading session of uh, July 1st out there. Volume behind the move, 5.4 million shares. Uh, the next day, though, was tested with lighter volume and failed. Uh, price only has really come back to the area where it broke out. So Netflix looks to be like in a consoli sideways consolidation out here. No volume off of the highs out here, so I would have to say Netflix uh, really uh, if in this little, you know, setting up another sideways consolidation move at all-time highs. Looks to me like it's just simply in a consolidation box. And that really began here. If we take a, a look at it, let me just do this. Let me uh, turn off the uh, profile for a moment. Let me just move over here. We'll clean up the chart just a, a tad. So let me turn that off. If we take a look at uh, Netflix. It's got some moving averages out here. But look at uh, this little... Uh, Breakaway right here. I'm taking us back to the trading session of June 17th when this broke upside, top side with 4.1 million shares out there. Let me draw a line across the uh, top of the uh, breakout area. That's going to be the trading session here from June the uh, 12th. Oh, I grabbed the wrong tool. 
Let me try to grab the right tool out here. Man, oh, man, Steve, oh, get your act together. All right, so we're going to take a look at the high from the trading session of uh, June the 16th. That's at 431.21. I'm going to expand this out just a uh, bit. There we go. That's where it broke out. You can see some volume, 4.1 million shares. When price came back and tested it on the trading session of July 10, 3.8 million shares. So if you were so inclined and you wanted to uh, buy uh, Netflix out here, or you were long Netflix right here and you were saying, hey, where do I have to be concerned? I would have to say your concern would come if you see a close below that July, June 16th, I should say, session. Preferably, you'd like to see the high hold since it's been tested once, 431.21. You know, the low being tested at... Uh 42342 that would be okay as well but uh, right now it looks like just a consolidation and uh, won't get out of that consolidation until it breaks 47587 with some uh, volume out there so that's actually the benefit of it not being the swing point on the wide price spread accelerated day from July 1st because the actual swing is the following day that is on uh, Netflix out here uh, also the upside you've got uh, Baidu Let's go see what Baidu is uh, doing out here. They're trying to hold up the NDX. I see the Dow is off 87 points right now. If we take a look at Baidu, this is on its uh, daily chart. It's now trying to take out a swing point. Well, it's done that. The question is, how is it going to do with volume and where is price going to close? 3.3 million shares on July 2nd. It gaps up this morning. It's done 1.2 million shares in 42 minutes of trading. That's pretty bullish out there. That says that uh, Baidu has really set it up an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. If we take a look at the smallest one, the smallest one, we'll take a look at a couple of them. The smallest one would be using the swing point from June 20th as your A point, the B point being July 2nd, and your C point being July 10th. You know, in essence, it is just about to uh, uh, finish off that small A to B equals CD at 197.68. But I don't think that's really the A to B equals CD that it wants to go ahead and uh, complete. It's more likely something a little bit larger out here. If we take a look at the, that, where would that take us to? Man, it's not a bad look in the stock chart at all. Where's the weakness inside of Baidu? Let me see if we can find any. Let me look at the weekly chart. Daily chart doesn't show too much in the way of any kind of weakness. Let's see what the weekly chart for Baidu is uh, showing us. Uh, you know, in a market that's weak today, this also is uh, strong out here. So it broke its consol well, yeah, broke a little consolidation, large consolidation area inside of Baidu. So that consolidation was running from a high of 165, 166, down to a, a low of uh, 82. So an 80, a uh, little more, 84 point consolidation on top of 166. That would be what 246 uh, plus, so 250 or so. You're at 195. Okay, so that's what the that's what the uh, weekly chart shows. Let's take a look. Was the uh, swing point high taken out with volume? Was not. So it's dealing here with. Uh, the swing point on a weekly basis of March 3rd, 27 million shares. It's up and over that with only 12, 13 million. Last week was 11 million. So it doesn't have that. But the question is, can it hold that high, which is from March 3rd, 2000? And uh, actually, yeah, March, that's, what, that's the swing point that's got to deal with. March 3rd, weekend of March 3rd, 2014. Nonetheless, it is a strong look in the stock chart on the uh, daily and on the uh, weekly. That was uh, Baidu. Let's go check out the ETFs with the uh, Dow off 91 points right now. So let's go check out the uh, – I still kind of go back and forth here. Uh, let's do this. Let's go take a look at the uh, futures contract. Let's go take a look at the S&P. Let's start off with there. With that, 1964 is what it's trading at. It ought to find uh, some support out here at the 1961 level. That's its market profile low. We know that that level has been pierced, so the, uh, the ice has cracked a bit. Uh, nonetheless, it was only below that level for uh, one trading session. That was on Thursday. Popped back up but into resistance on uh, Friday as it got up to that 1974-25 level. In order for the uh, S&P, the ES Mini, to give you any kind of real selling pressure mode out here, you want to see it today close below that 1961 level. That's on the ES Mini. Let's go flip over to the uh, SPY chart out here. As we take a look at the uh, SPY, let me see if I can get that right here. As we take a look at the SPY, it's trading off about uh, 68 cents right now. 
trade on 197. Let's go take a look at its uh, market profiles. They should populate here as soon as I turn them on. There we go. Now they're on. So the market profile on the uh, daily chart for the SPY is up above its uh, resistance zone. So it says that the SPY ought to find support at 195.20 out here. As we speak right now, even as I take a look at the SPY, it is not in any kind of bearish formation that I can uh, see out here. It did make a uh, price relative strength divergent top back here on the trading session of July the uh, 3rd. That's about as bearish of a that's as bearish that I can identify on the uh, stock chart out here. If the spies close below that 195.20 level, its next level of support would be 193.46. Closing below that would uh, signal a real change in trend would be taking place inside of the uh, spy. If we go look at the uh, QQQ, QQQ, it's trading off uh, three tenths of a percent, down 31 pennies right now. It too is showing its market profile high, which is trading above at the 95.39 level, it's trading 95.81. It's unfair low, down at $94.42 out there. So uh, still in nice bullish uh, mode out here. It, too, is making a higher high on less relative strength. That's the only reversal signal and pattern that's out there. The problem is, is Friday's trading session somewhat negated the reversal signal that we got on the trading session of July 17th out there. Volume as well on that move on July 18th, not too bad. 37 million shares to the downside was 43 million shares. Okay, you do have volume pushing lower as uh, the queues move uh, lower out here but still not too too shabby really when you take a look at the stock chart and you uh, move back and you step back and look at it let's go take a look at the iwm the iwm out here it is uh, trading out at uh i should just look at the stock chart shouldn't i 113.44 now the iwm this in my opinion is what we really want to be paying attention to out here why do I say that? Well, because the IWM has been the weak link out here. Now, the IWM has a B point of an A to B equals C D to the downside. That B point is a trading session from July the 10th. 50 million shares. Price move below that was 62 million shares. So in one sense here, let's take a look at the A to B equals C D to the downside. You can say you've got a confirmed A to B equals C D to the downside inside of the Russell 2000, taking it to 109.46, but that's not really what it would do. It would get down to the 107.56 area. And at 107.56, uh, oddly enough, not really oddly, but uh, it would take you down to the May 15th uh, swing point low. And that low is at 107.44, a little hammer candle down there. So that is the move that is currently underway. The IWM is still trading below its market profile support level. That's the green line. It has been breaking those green lines on the way down. That is bearish. So the IWM is the bearish, most bearish of them all. However... Friday's uh, trading session, nice little bullish engulfing candle, uh, competing with what? Competing with 8.618 retracement level. And that's the level coming off of that low all the way up to the high that was put in here on the trading session of uh, July 1st. So that's from the April 15th low, or May 15th low, to the July 1st high out there. 0.618 level is 112.61. So what that really says, that says you need to watch the trading session from Thursday, July 17th, 112.20. Any close below that, and what we're likely to see is the IWM run down to that May 15th area. 8779276648. This is Steve Rhodes. This is Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, folks, go over to the homepage at TFN.com and sign up for my uh, Mastering Probability newsletter service. We'll be right back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 87. S&P down uh, 8 points. Uh, composite off uh, 15. Hope everyone uh, had a, uh, had a uh, wonderful weekend out there. How about that uh, Rory... McElroy, uh, right out of the gate, uh, leading the uh, leading the tournament the entire way out there and winning the uh, third leg of the uh, four out there for uh, so he's he's won everything except for the uh, except for he's won the U.S. Open, he's won the uh, PGA, and now he's won the uh, British Open. And quite frankly, there was a time several years ago when he was playing up at Augusta, he was in the lead. Uh, I believe it was the final day out there. Was it Saturday or the final day? I apologize. Maybe somebody in the den knows. Um, but he got to hole number 10, and he, he hit the ball to places that uh, nobody had ever seen before out there. That was called a uh, – he had quite a, a hook on that. But he almost uh, – he was in he was in the place there to be able to win the Masters. So uh, pretty good chance that uh, he will be, he'll be in the uh, contention out there. But pretty amazing uh, golf. Uh, really, uh, really did a, a great job under all kinds of uh, mental pressure out there. And uh, I saw the interview uh, yesterday afternoon, and what was great was uh, he said that he just focused on two words. Now, the cool thing about words is that, you see, the, each of us are controlled by our physical state. You know, there's only one thing that controls. We do what we do to meet our needs, it's pretty, pretty much, pretty, pretty simple. 
And in in his case here, in order to meet his needs of being able to win the British Open, what he recognized is really there's there's three three things that influence us: our physiology, and the physiology that can change. Of course, you know if you've ever had a beer, or a glass of wine, or a glass of sake, you know that changes your physiology. Just as smoking a cigarette will do, just as having a glass of orange juice or you know some how about a wheatgrass, you know all those things can change your physiology just as well as uh, you know. And which and your physiology pretty much represents about sixty seventy percent of your of your entire focus so if you're in a bad spot make sure you just change your physiology you want to know a great test for that go find somebody who's got a headache sit them down in a chair get a couple of people and have them start massaging their body or what have you their focus will switch over to the massaging and their headache will actually go away so that's a cool little test that you can do where am i going with this good question where i'm going with this is you're either dealing with your physiology that's one thing you've got your actual uh, focus and you've got words out here obviously he was focused on one shot at a time but it was his words that were really the trick to get him back into sync after hitting a bad shot. And at that stage, you know, he was focused on number one, which is called process. Well, in our case, when it comes to trading and investing, you should be focused on your patterns. That's really your process. What are your signals to go long or short? If they get violated, what is it that you should do out there? And then he was focused on when he was putting, because putting is where that game was won for him uh, yesterday as well as all weekend. You know, he was focused on one specific spot, making sure that he hit his mark out there. So I want you to hit your mark. We can all learn from a guy like uh, Rory McIlroy. We can learn from so many people out there. In fact, one of the things we can learn from with regard to the market, okay, you got the uh, Dow's off uh, 83 points right now. When I opened up the uh, show at uh, 9 o'clock this morning, I showed this one chart, so let's check back in on this chart. I say that the uh, Russell 2000 is really going to be the key for us to understand what's going on inside these markets here. The Russell 2000 now had broken out on a Friday of its descending price channel. Price has pulled back this morning, but it's trying to it's just testing the descending price channel out here. Hasn't closed back inside it as of yet. Of course, there's a little 10-minute delay inside of the uh, this uh, uh, inside of my Russell 2000 feed out here, but that's what's going on inside of uh, that uh, stock chart. On the uh, daily charts, on a 30-minute chart here, we're going to come into this 30 minutes in less than two minutes out here. We're going to show you the uh, strength of the uh, bulls or where the bulls are defending their position out here, and that's at this uh, level. It's at the uh, price point of this little hammer candle that occurred on uh, at, at 9.30 this morning. Yeah, 9.30 this morning, that low, 1963.50. That level here has been tested over the course of the last hour, and it has held. You see it closed below, I say, really, 1962.75 on a 30-minute chart out there. And what that gives us is the promise for lower price during the uh, trading session. Otherwise, the uh, bulls, that's the level that they are defending if we uh, take a look at what we'll do here just before we go to break and then we come back from break, let's take a look and look at the uh, daily indices. Let's use the Rhodes Momentum Indicator to get a feel for what is uh, going on. Try to identify some levels of support and resistance as we begin here with the NASDAQ uh, composite. Trading lower this morning, certainly off of the uh, highs where it uh, finished on uh, Friday, but still... You know, even with a little bit of pressure here, it's uh, not not too bad. Right now, it's trading. It has not even pierced uh, today, I should say. It has not pierced the uh, 20-day exponential moving average. 43.98 is the uh, number there, but it still is in a bullish uh, shape out here. Uh, any break of the uh, 50-day line, that's at 43.30.37. That'll be sending a, a little different picture out there. But that's what's going on inside of the composite. Inside of the Dow Jones transports, we'll take a look at the transports when, they, uh, when we come back here. They did, they did form a price relative strength divergence, but uh, on Friday's session, it kind of wiped out the majority of that. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Steve Rhodes, TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is off 95, S&P down uh, 8. Uh, leading the charge upside, Netflix, Baidu, Allegrin, Valiant uh, Pharmaceuticals, uh, Herco Companies, uh, Fang, Diamondback Energy out there. In fact, I was looking at uh, Fang over the uh, weekend. Uh, right now, trading out at 89.05. If I pull that on the uh, chart out here, this had completed a 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD to the upside here. Uh, that was coming off of a swing point back on uh, March the 11th, 2014. That was my A point. I used that for my A, my B point. I used the high on April 22nd, then the uh, swing point low back on May 15th out there. So 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD. Oftentimes you do that and you do something different. Well, Fang here pulled uh, to the uh, just really consolidate. It's been consolidating here at its uh, lows. Uh, if it can uh, take out the swing from uh, June 18th, that high is 93.33, 2.9 million shares up there. Right now it's trading into the swing point with 356,000 shares. So we've been trading for an hour. It is light on volume out there. But if it can take out that high, that'll set up a new A to B equals CD to the upside. And that is on Diamondback Energy, F-A-N-G. Excuse me. F-A-N-G is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Now, 
I don't recall what we were doing before the uh, break out there. So we'll just have to, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a look at, I know what we were doing, we're going to take a look at the uh, Rose Momentum uh, indicators out here. And I was mentioning the Dow Jones Transport. So the Dow Jones Transport is trading 83.57. Right now the transports are down uh, 25 points out there. So actually... Of all of the uh, indices out here, the transports are the uh, lightest on the way down. Uh, you've got, uh, percentage-wise, the uh, Dow is off about six-tenths of a percent. Russell 2000 up, uh, off uh, seven-tenths of a percent, up three-quarters of a percent out there. Let's take a look here at the uh, transports. The transports making a uh, price relative strength divergent high, uh, doing that and confirming it with a little bear sash candle on July 17th. But Friday session all but wiped that out. That makes this pattern a very, very, very suspect out here. Until the uh, Dow Jones transports, let's say, close below the 20-day exponential moving average at about 20, 82.58 out here. Its trend just remains cautionary, but nothing more, nothing less than that. If we take a look at the uh, Dow Jones industrials out here, uh, no price relative strength divergent patterns for it to uh, worry about. Uh, it is trading out at 17,022. That 20-day uh, exponential moving average has held as a support since May 21st out there. It's been tested several times. That is 16,969 out there. So we'll see if that continues to hold throughout the day. If that fails today, then where the uh, Dow ought to find uh, some support is this little hammer candle from June 26th out there. That's the next area that you'd want to watch. That low is at 16,746 in the uh, market. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah, I meant to uh, switch over and take a look at a different chart. Let's go take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange out here, the NYSE. Now, this is of all the stock indices out here, Russell 2000 and the New York Stock Exchange are the most bearish out here. The most bearish because the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the wider swath of the marketplace, the bears took control on July the 8th, I believe. That's when the summation index turned down. That's when the uh, price oscillator got below the uh, zero line. Nonetheless, man, for the bears having control of the market for the last couple of weeks here, it's July 21st uh, and uh, July 8th was when they, it may have been the uh, 7th, it was the 7th or the 8th, when the bears actually turned the price oscillator down below the uh, zero line, they've been able to do basically no price damage out here. I mean, none. None to uh, speak of. That's not to say that it can't happen uh, in, the, uh, you know, in the upcoming days out here, but basically they have done no damage whatsoever. You take a look at that 20-day exponential moving average out here. You know, the New York Stock Exchange has been above that since April 15th. hasn't even been touched since then. That's that priced out at 10857 So this does have a, a price relative strength diversion pattern. It does have a, a con candle confirmation, a little bear sash candle on July the 7th. You know, it's got everything. Yet, really, we are only, it's trading at 10,923, and the high is at 10, I'm sorry, it's 11,105. Uh, That's really not much in the way of uh, damage out there. 120, 130 points. Um, it's just not much in the way of uh, damage. If we take a look at the, and that's, the, that's from the wider swath of the marketplace out here. As I say, not that uh, not that more damage can't be done. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 out here, Russell 2000 I mentioned uh, has uh, made it on uh, Thursday, made the 0 .618 retracement level that's coming off of the hammer candle from May 15th up to the high on the trading session of uh, July the uh, first out there, and a little bullish engulfing candle that had formed on uh, Friday. Still though, even with that bullish engulfing candle, it still looks uh, relatively uh, weak out here. Uh, if it closes below. The low of uh, Thursday out there, that will suggest a move down to the May 15th lows out here. So the Russell and the New York Stock Exchange, two areas that we want to pay attention to. Let's take a look at the semiconductor index out here, the SOX. It uh, formed a, a price relative strength divergent pattern. This thing has been on fire. Uh, it did this uh, really a couple times. The uh, first time was July the 3rd and then July the uh, 7th out here when it formed a little bearish engulfing the candle. Yet that uh, price was only able to make it down to the 13th period, exponential moving average. Uh, a couple days later, it made it down to the 20. That was on July the uh, 10th out here. Uh, Thursday's session pushed it down below the 20-day and uh, moved right back up above it the very next trading session. That was on uh, Friday. Uh, so it does have some uh, bearish tendency looks to it, but really I'd have to say more cautionary than anything else, and that is the uh, SOC. So uh, not exactly the weakest. And the market won't go lower without the, uh, without the uh, SOCs and 
the uh, and the uh, uh, financials. So we'll actually take a look at the financials here in a, a moment. You've got the S and P 500 here right now. It's trading out at 1967.41. Uh, it too has a price relative strength divergent top. That says that that uh, high from July 3rd is very important uh, for it to be able to uh, take out. But again, still. Uh, nothing more than a high-level consolidation going on inside of the S&P 500 as we speak right now. If we take a look at the uh, XAU, let's go look at the XAU. Uh, it has a price relative strength divergent uh, top. Uh, that formed here on the trading session of July 10th. That was a key reversal session. It had everything dark cloud cover, key reversal session. That says that that high for everybody that's inside of the uh, gold miners uh, marketplace out here, that high of 10601 is going to be very important to be able to uh, take out. As bearish as that pattern should be out here, still not a ton of price damage inside of the uh, inside of the XAU out here. And uh, yet, too, the 20-day uh, exponential moving average holding as uh, support. If we uh, take a look at the, uh, what do I want to look at? The uh, Let's go take a look at the VIX index. Let me put that up on my screen out here. Uh, the VIX index, uh, boy, what a uh, what a wild 32% ride on the trading session of July 17th. And then they move back to its 50-day exponential moving average. It's trading well above that. That 50-day 50, uh, 50 exponential moving average is priced at $12. No, yeah, $12 even Stephen right now. And it's trading out at 1303. Of course, we know when the VIX closes above the 50 day exponential moving average, that's where you see carnage in the uh, marketplace out there. Uh, let's, oh, uh, let's go take a look at the XLF. And then uh, I have a request to go take a look at GE. So we'll do that. But first, let's take a look at the uh, financials out here, see what the XLF is doing. So it's trading out at uh, 2276 out here. Um, it's got resistance out here at this little bearish engulfing candle from July 16th, but uh, still. You know, it looks okay. There's not uh, no real, real damage yet having been done to the uh, financial sector, the XLF. Let's go take a look at uh, GE. We've got the uh, markets uh, towards their session lows. The Dow's off 115. The S&P down 11 points right now. But let's go check in on uh, GE and see what it is uh, doing. Give me a moment. We'll punch in the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, General Electric, the General, which is uh, about, I think, the 27th holding inside of the S&P 500. It's also a great indicator as to what the Dow is going to do, a great leading indicator, I should say. Moving lower this morning here with some conviction behind the move, 20 million shares. It's got, or it had, let me put the, a, the correct A to B equals CD pattern out here. The A point inside of uh, GE is going to be the high from June 19th. That's our A point. Your B point now down here at the uh, July 10th level, the C point be in the retracement up on July 16th. It has now completed the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, but not the way you like to see it completed. If you are, well, whether you're bullish or you're bearish, doesn't matter. Just simply the completion of the uh, pattern. Price projection of that was 25.71. The actual interest session low so far, 25.72. But the way that it's coming down with accelerating volume, uh, it has taken it right into its last breakout session, which says it's sort to of move back down to the 1 to 1.272 area. That'll take into the swing point of April the 11th. And that's down at the low of 25.43. And that is on General Electric. Let's uh, put this on a, a weekly chart as well, get a feel for what General is. General Electric here is uh, doing on the weekly chart. Give me a moment to do that. Pull that up on the screen. So it shows its uh, market profile support level down at uh, 2470. That's actually also where it's got this uh, swing point on the weekly chart from February 3rd. So it looks like it is headed towards those lows out there. We'll see if it can hold that support. 2470 being a, a key number. That is on uh, General Electric out there. Uh, speaking of the uh, general, let me go take a look at Stevie's uh, General Electric correlation chart. Let's go see what's going on as we speak today. Uh, here is the uh, general. Uh, general Electric, this is certainly one we want to uh, pay attention to because it's a great leading indicator. General Electric, by the way, is a great leading indicator as to what the Dow wants to uh, do. When the uh, when GE is headed in a different direction, I don't, I, and I mean making lower highs or higher highs out there, it's a really good leading indicator as what the uh, Dow eventually is going to uh, do. That uh, won't, uh, uh, and right at this stage here, what we know about GE is it broke its trend line. It broke it right around the uh, June 24th, 25th level 
broke it, moved lower, came back up and tested it. Red around July 3rd, never broke back above the uh, level, uh, moved lower, came back and tested it here back on uh, July 16th, and then continued its move lower out here. That's on General Electric. It broke its trend. The Dow, on the other hand, is trying to break its trend line today, but at this stage here, the day's not over, so we'll see what the day brings us for the Dow out here. But it is threatening to break that trend line. Last time, we saw this pattern take place inside of the GE-Dow correlation out here. It broke, in the case of GE, it broke its trend line back on January 6th, and it took until... January 26th, that was 20 days later. In the case of GE, this time around, it broke it on June 25th. 20 days later have all, has, has already passed out there. So from a timing standpoint, we'll sort of ignore that. But we won't ignore the trend line that is in place right now. A closing below that, you can see last time around, led to a pretty significant decline. That was with the lows back in February inside of the Dow out here. So that's what's going on on that. Oh, geez, I didn't put the chart on my screen for you to look at. My apology. Here's the chart. Son of a gun. Okay, here's a chart to uh, look at, so I'll try to do this quickly. You can see this little trend line. Here's GE at the, uh, at the uh, top of the screen. So take a look at that trend line, the current one that we're looking at. That's the uh, blue diagonal line. Look at the bottom chart out here. That's the uh, Dow. Take a look at its diagonal line. You can see right now today price is kind of piercing through it as it did during the trading session of uh, May the uh, 20th or so, May 20th or 21st out here. But here's that same diagonal line, the same blue trend line inside of uh, GE. By the way, these little red lines that you see on the GE chart versus the black lines on the uh, Dow chart, those are the ones where the correlation become, uh, they diverge, and it is GE that points the way as to what is typically going to happen inside the uh, marketplace. That's why we want to be paying attention, because ever since the highs were made back here in the uh, June time frame, the Dow has made higher highs, and GE has made lower highs out there, and that's an indication of some uh, divergence out there. So there's our diverging chart between GE and the uh, Dow, and it does signal caution in the uh, marketplace out there. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow trading uh, down uh, 121 points, 120 points, the S&P off 11. Uh, let's go back to the uh, market profiles on the, uh, on the daily uh, contracts out here for the uh, futures indices. Let's go see what they have to say. So you've got the S&P right now, ES Mini trading below its market profile low. The Russell is already below. It has been for, uh, well, it's been trading below its market profile lows since the uh, July 8th time frame. Not the case inside of the Dow or the uh, NASDAQ. So the two strong uh, pins out here, two strong indices out here being the Dow. Right now inside the uh, Dow on the daily chart, it just recently formed a new market profile. Uh, I would say the old market profile low, the new market, uh, the old market profile high, the new market profile low is the area of support inside of the Dow. That takes it to the 16758 to I believe 16 669 somewhere like right around there seven maybe it was 769. Uh, inside of the Dow. Look for that. Right now, all the Dow has done is just traded back into its point of control, its area of congestion, the area where it is most comfortably traded into. And that is right now really at the 16,900-ish range out here. If we look at the uh, NASDAQ, the NQ out here, NASDAQ trying to punch through old uh, resistance out here. Well, it's punched through the old resistance line, but only for one trading session. That was on uh, Friday. Now it's formed a new market uh, profile low for us to respect. 39.30 is the number to be paying attention to at the high. Uh, 38.53 at the uh, lows. That happened to be approximately the low on uh, Friday out here. The actual low was 38.54. Dow again trading off this morning right now, down about 115 points. S&P's off 11. This is Steve Rhodes. This is Tiger Financial News Network. We'll be right back, folks. market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you now is the perfect time to open up an account with nadex 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow trading up 113 right now, S&P down 11. Let's go uh, check in on some uh, shorter-term charts to get a feel for what's going on. Let's look at that 30-minute uh, S&P futures contract. We can see uh, closing right now uh, below the uh, hammer candle. We've got uh, six minutes in the uh, trading session out here. So, again, that hammer candle, that came in at 9.30 this morning. The low out there was 1963.50. 1963.50 ought to become a resistance uh, level on a uh, bounce. Ought to become a re resistance level on the bounce. Of course, you might be saying, well, how can you say that it would bounce? Well, if we take a look at these, uh, the lower portion of my chart out here, uh, you can take a look at the uh, relative strength, or in this case here, relative weakness uh, uh, reading out here. You can see you're at 26, uh, is that 20, 2804 out there. 
I don't have my spectacles on. Uh, so we're looking at 2804. Once you get down below 30, you start to reach an oversold uh, condition. Last time down in this uh, range here, we saw a little bit of an oversold level. That was on July the, uh, when was that, July uh, 17th out there. And that was, uh, you can see that was during the, uh, after the news. Here's the last hammer candle, by the way, or a hammer candle, another hammer candle inside of the ES Mini. Uh, that was on the trading session of uh, 1230 on July the 17th. That low out there was 1959.50. Once we saw a break below that, that's what went ahead and moved the uh, market down into the 1942-ish type range out there. When you get down into an oversold condition, much like back here, there's another hammer that was broken back here in the trading session of uh, July 17th out there. That did not act as a resistance on the uh, bounce up, but that was a much smaller hammer than the one here that we formed coming into the 9.30 session. Nonetheless, if you take a look at the bottom of my chart, you see that oversold condition on a 30-minute time frame. Uh, usually, you start to see a bounce out of there. Now, it's not extremely oversold like those were, meaning back there on the trading session at uh, July 17th, you saw that uh, RSI get down to a level of, as soon as I put in my little box out here, I can tell you what it is. Got down to, a, well, i got to expand the box. All right, that helped. The RSI reading there, again, below 30 is oversold. It got down to 21. You're only at 28.04 right now. But still something to uh, help to guide you, to gauge you as to what the markets are doing, just simply so that you have something to uh, prepare for. If we take a look at the uh, retracement uh, levels, um, let me do this here real quickly. Let me switch over here. It's just a little bit quicker for me to do the retracements, a little bit easier for you to see as well. That was a 30-minute chart. Let me stick with the 30-minute uh, chart here. And if we go from the low, that was from uh, that's a price level here of 1942.50 up to a high that was put in at uh, 2:30 in the afternoon. That was on July the 18th out here. You'll see right now you've only made the 0 .382 retracement. Uh, 0.618 level, 195463. So I would expect a uh, push lower to find some support right around that 1955-ish type uh, level. Of course, if these uh, lows here get rejected, meaning right now we're trading into that hammer candle low, if it was able to get close back above that and above the 1962.75 number out there, that would tell you the bulls are really out trying to defend their uh, territory. Uh, folks, uh, one day left here, less than a day left, for you to take advantage of my uh, newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you're not charged a darn penny. All you're doing, you're putting your credit card information in, but you're not being charged. You only can be charged on day 31. That means you've got 30 days. Use of the service, access to my money management workshop, 90-minute workshop. That has to be a must on your list out there and all the other great education and trades. Uh, folks, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, TFN now starts its programming each morning at 8 a.m. with our man John Logan, and we run through uh, 6 p.m. Tonight, Tom's show has been moved to the 3 to 5 p.m. slot out there. So thanks so much for joining us. Have a great Monday. I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.